So we were not on a begging mission, even as we are in great need as a continent and all that. That should go to demonstrate that Africa is, should never be seen as a continent that needs generosity. We want Do you know that even up to now, as a continent or as a country, when we talk about our sovereignty in Africa, some European leaders still look at us like, what are you talking about? They still look at us like babies that need to be nurtured. They still look at Africa like a continent that needs help. Africa is important to the world because the continent holds a huge proportion of the world's natural resources, both renewable and non-renewable. Africa is home to some 30% of the world's mineral resources. So who really needs the help? I want you to watch this video and pay close attention to the reactions some of the African leaders, so some of the European leaders, pay close attention to their facial expression when this African leader was saying the things that matters to we Africans. His statement looks I don't want to use I don't want to I don't want to use some words on my own, but I want you to use your intuition. Listen to what this man is saying and pay close attention to the reactions of some of the world leaders that are seated in this meeting. Just watch this video and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Just watch, watch and share. Recently, uh, seven African countries uh, decided to go to go and put a call for peace to Ukraine and to Russia. And we raised a number of issues uh, Zambia was represented, Comoros was represented, uh, Republic of Congo was represented, Senegal was represented, Uganda, uh, as well as South Africa. So we were all represented, and Egypt as well. So we were all at one, that even as we were going to address an issue of the war which has had a negative impact on the African continent, which is the rise in prices, for food, rise in prices for fertilizers, we were clear that we are not going there as beggars. We are not going to ask for a favor to both Ukraine and Russia. We were going there to say, open up the Black Sea Channel so that the, sea, uh, the, the, the grains and the fertilizers should go into the world market. So we were not on a begging mission, even as we are in great need as a continent and all that. That should go to demonstrate that Africa is, should never be seen as a continent that needs generosity. We want to be treated as equals. Even in the multilateral institutions, we want to be treated as equals. And if our equity is at a low ebb, there must be ways in which that can be addressed. To us, this is very important. Our sovereignty is one of the things that we hold on dearly to. And we demonstrated that very clearly to both President Zelensky and to President Putin when it came to this issue. Even as there were suggestions that, yes, we can donate this, we can donate that, we said, we want you to release these grains and fertilizers to the world market so that the world can trade in these commodities and other issues we can handle in a different way. I wanted to make that point so that it should be understood where Africa has evolved up to. We want to be key players on the world stage, we want to be key players even in the financial uh, markets and uh, in the MDBs. Now, these are the positive things. I do, Mr. Uh, President Macron, want us to address another issue which to us is a bit of a negative. Uh, you will have heard President Sisi talking about the 100 billion that was promised in Paris. President Sasson yesterday as well also spoke about it at the dinner. Now there is that issue that a number of the commitments that have been made have not really been fully lived up to. But before I get into details, let me immediately say that we recognize the many initiatives that have been put on the table and a number of countries here have done so, Germany, has gone out of the way to put a number of initiatives 
and uh, the U.S. has also done a number of things. But there have been times when we felt like we were beggars. I played a key role as chair of uh, the African Union during the COVID period. We felt like we were beggars when it came to vaccine availability, when we felt we needed access to vaccines, and the Northern Hemisphere countries had bought all the vaccines in the world, and they were hogging them. And they didn't want to release them at the time when we needed them most. And we felt like we were begging. And at times it felt like they would just be droppings from the table, that yes, we will give you that and that. And let me tell you something that that's generated a lot of resentment. We, we, we resented that and it got worse when we said we want to manufacture our own vaccine. And when we went to the WTO, there was a lot of resistance, enormous resistance. And we kept saying, what is more important, life or profits by your big pharmaceutical companies? And that too, I must tell you now, generated and deepened that disappointment and resentment on our part because we felt like life in the Northern Hemisphere is much more important than life in the Global South. And these are issues that need to be addressed. And I'm glad that we are all seated here like this because we've got to get to the heart of these matters and address them. Now, I come to promises that have been made. And Chancellor Schultz was saying, Schultz was saying, we, we've got to walk the talk. Yes, we want to see the talk being walked. President Sassoon Gwesu yesterday said at the dinner, a hundred billion dollars was promised per year. And he was saying, I've never seen that. And many of us will testify that that hundred billion dollars has, has never really been made available. And this should stand out as something that needs to be addressed. Because sometimes we sit at conferences like this and say, yes, we'll make this available, this available, and we believe you. We believe you, but now the tire must hit the tar. We must now see action flowing from that. Now, I want to then talk about something very practical. President Sassungwesu raised it yesterday. He said,